Welcome back to You've Got This, the channel that's dedicated to teaching you all the life skills you need to make it in this world. Today we're doing part two of our planner. This is part of a time management skill set. I use a weekly planner and I showed it to you in issue or and I showed it to you in um, episode one. And let me just kind of rehash a little bit about what we did. You know, so I have this planner and I uh, bought it at a drugstore. You can find it, find them almost anywhere. And the thing that's great about it is in the front, it's got two years, actually this has four years worth of calendar dates so you can look in advance and plan years out in advance for trips or conferences or things like that or, or um, who knows, weddings, you never know. But anyway, what we did was we kind of did a basic fleshing out of how the work week was going to look. And what we said was, let's put down our appointments. And we put down that my dogs had to go to the veterinarian. I needed to get a haircut. I filled in the fact that my trash comes to be picked up on Wednesdays and our recycling, the city picks up recycling on Fridays. And then I broke down um, the chores, the household chores I was going to do and I assigned a chore to each day so that I don't have to do it all on one day and I have, uh, you know, maybe some chunks of time to go have some fun and not just spend it the whole day cleaning. And it's so much easier if you only take 20 to 30 minutes to vacuum rather than two and a half hours to clean the whole house if you just break it down like that. And then the other thing was I filled out the exercise that I was going to be doing each day just to hold myself accountable and to remind myself of how I like to sequence my workouts because I like to work certain body groups with my weights and let them have days in between to rest and repair. So that's how I can keep track and make sure I'm not stacking too many arm days up or whatever in a row. Now what I want to talk to you about is filling in the rest of this with maybe it's a little more advanced but this is now you know there's a lot more to life than just exercising and going to appointments. There's also the fact that you're going to um, want to maybe plan your menu, plan a day for um, reviewing your finances, so what I usually like to do is at least one day a week, I like to sit at my desk, go through all my bills, and look at the status of my financial kingdom, <laughs> which isn't always great, but at least I'm tracking it and I know what to expect and I also can plan out in advance. So, so that it, it just gives me a, an idea of where I'm at and where I'm heading. So on Sundays, I'm typically going to sit down at my desk and I just usually call it bills and finances. And that's where I pay my bills and I review all my accounts and I often project forward. I'm just making sure that I, I like to project forward like one to two years, honestly. And I'm going to show you how I budget and how I plan my finances on another video so that you can do the same. And it's exciting when you can see that you can maybe make your savings grow. The other thing I like to do is I like to, to put down the menu for each day. This helps me because on Sunday, I'm probably gonna go grocery shopping for the next week. So let's let's pretend that this is the next week. And I know that one night we want to have, let's say tacos. And the next night we're going to have cheesy squash. Someday I'm going to show you guys all these recipes because they're inexpensive and delicious. Um, one night maybe we'll have lentil soup. And I usually have side dishes with each of these, but this is just the main dish. Maybe one night I'm gonna do mushroom gravy and potatoes. Maybe I'm gonna have falafel and pilaf one night. 
Maybe we're gonna do uh, my vegan burgers and fries. And maybe I won't fill anything out Sunday. Maybe I'll just uh, eat leftovers or maybe I'll do something different, whatever I feel like. So that gives me an idea when I'm making up my shopping list of the things that I would need, right? Um, and I'm going to do an entire episode on menu planning and creating your shopping list from that and um, how you're going to buy specific ingredients that cross over to other dishes so that you're not buying 20 million things, you're buying 10 main things and it's gonna be used in all of your recipes or several at least, okay? But anyway, so that's what I like to do is put out a menu and on Sunday, probably review my finances and bills, go gro grocery shopping and maybe wash my car just so that it's all nice and clean for the week. So, and then what, what this allows you to do, you know, maybe I'm also on the day I'm going to fill out all the things I need to do for work. Let me see if I can find one. This is just a fake page, going back to a day I didn't really use this book, but let's see if I can find a page that has some things that I really actually did have to do. So I needed to, back in March, I needed to set up payroll for my LLC for this channel. On this day, I needed to set up an LLC bank account, and I needed to dissolve another LLC I had in another state. And I needed to call a structural engineer to look at my house because something was going wrong with it. You know, so th that's where I'm going to fill in. Here was um, setting up payroll with the Secretary of State, writing my friend's letters. I put them in. I still write letters. I like to get letters, so in order to get letters, you have to write letters. And so anyway, I like to stay in touch with my friends and they write me too. But anyway, this is a real example of one of my, my weeks. The other thing I like to do, see if I can find another example of one that I really did do. Sometimes what I'll do is at the top of the page, there's a blank space up here. I write down some of the big projects that need to happen in my life, like if I'm going on a trip or if I need to get car insurance or if I need to get some other uh, insurance like my E&O, that's called um, errors and omissions, that was from my previous career, but I, need, I still need to carry it. I need to order window coverings, I need to buy plane tickets, I need to make an eye appointment. I write these out in, up here to remind myself that I've got some big things I need to attend to. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to attend to them, but I'm reminding myself that I need to do these things. And then, so I'll write those up here. So let's make some fake ones, or maybe they're real for me, I don't know. I need to pay my property taxes. That's a real one. I have to do that tomorrow. Property taxes. I need to get workman's comp set up. I need to pay my quarterly taxes. You get the idea. These are big things that have to happen. I don't know which day I'm going to do them, but I make myself a little checkbox. I write down these topics, and then as I go through on these days, I'll say, oh, here's a day that I, could, I can actually pay my property taxes, and I'll put it on that day. Oh, here's a day that I can sit down and get my workman's comp set up. And then as, once I get done with them, I check it off and it's satisfying to see the boxes get checked off. Anything that I didn't do this week that needed to be done gets moved over to the next week and I start my list again with the things I didn't do and maybe I add new ones that I now have to do. So that's one way to stay on top of the important tasks that you need that you have coming up. And let's see, one of the other things I really like about these planners is just that they give you these blank pages in the back that you can fill out. And I have, so it just says notes. Well, I kind of make these my, some of my goals that, of things that I'd like to accomplish. And I break it down like, well, here I'm anticipating some upcoming expenses I have this year that are going to be kind of pricey. So I've put them down and estimated approximately what they're going to cost. On this page, I wrote down some of my goals for this channel that I needed to get done. 
On this page, I have house. This is this house is new to me. We moved in here like six months ago and there are a lot of things that need to be done to it or upgraded. Actually some repairs, major repairs that need to be done and also some upgrades. So what I did was I wrote down all the things that I want to do over the next couple of years. And then I went ahead and put an asterisk next to the ones I want to accomplish for 2019. And then the other ones, they might be more expensive and I can't afford to do them yet, like I need a new garage door. But it's on here and I remember that I need to do it and I will do it um, and I'll save up for it. So that's an example of what you can do. I have personal goals. I want to improve my nutrition and my fitness. I, need, I needed to write a bunch of thank you notes, but I did that. I need to, I want to get back to my original fluency with Spanish. I used to be pretty fluent in Spanish and it's definitely a use it or lose it. So I, I'm, I'm wanting to go back to that. So anyway, you can see that, you know, you can create whatever categories of goals you have. This was my vegetable garden for this year. What am I going to put in this year? It's a small garden this year. We'll expand it later, but this year, here are all the things I want to plant. And it's kind of fun to, sit down on a rainy day and just sort of plan out things that matter to you, whatever, the, whatever that topic may be, and think about them and, and write them down. And I'm a firm believer in, well, I like, I'm old school, but I like to write by hand. It, it actually, to me, makes me feel like I am um, transferring what it is I want onto paper and back into my mind when I hand write it. Um, and it sticks with me and becomes maybe a more concrete kind of a goal. I do do some things like on my phone and on my tablet lists and things like this, but, um, but I, there is some value, I think, in handwriting. Um, but you certainly, you know, because maybe you're a lot younger, you may work exclusively on your phone or on, on a, a computer or a tablet. Um, and if you're doing everything on there, you know, they have planners on there and, and you can do the same thing I'm doing in that way. This is just how I've always done it and, I'm, and I like it. It's kind of fun for me. So anyway, that is the value of having some sort of a planner, looking to the week ahead, thinking about what it is that you want to accomplish. You know, you may not even get them all done. It's not a big deal. Just carry it over to the next week. Um, obviously, there are some things that you should get done that are, the time is of the essence. It's usually having to do with paperwork, filing things on time, or, 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 or if it's a work project or something like that. This just helps keep you on track so that you don't have it all up start, stored in your head and you feel like, there's so much I have to do and I'm stressed out because I, and, I, and then I think it can lead to procrastination because you become overwhelmed with how much you have going on. If you can just break it down, lay it out, maybe you'll do all of it, maybe you'll only do part of it, not a big deal, carry it over to the next week and just carry on. And in that way, I think you will be able to plan to look forward to things, um, look forward into your future as to what it is that you're hoping to accomplish in your life. And it's just a really nice concrete way to achieve that. So I hope you found that very helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, thanks for joining me. And I think you've got this.